Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating an explosion. The process of creating explosions in Blender is actually a lot easier than you might think. All you need is three things. A fast moving particle system, a smoke and fire simulation, and a basic material. And we're going to be covering all of that today. Let's get started by deleting the default cube and then you can press shift A and let's add in our emitter object. Let's go with an icosphere. Now before you do anything else, make sure you open up this panel right here and set the number of subdivisions up to a level of three. There we go, let's go into front view and delete half of these. So I'm gonna go into wireframe and into edit mode and let's box select the bottom half right here, press X and delete the vertices. Then we'll move it down. This is gonna be our emitter object which emits all of the particles which creates the shape of the explosion. Now before we create the particle system, I want to give the surface of this a bit more randomization. So let's add in a displacement modifier over here in the modifier panel. I'm going to click new on that texture, go over to the texture panel and switch the type from image or movie over to clouds. Then you can play around with the size until you get the bumps that you want. And then from here, we'll scale the entire thing down roughly to about a 0.4 or 0.5 on the dimensions. With that done, we can go ahead and create the particle system. I'm going to jump over to the particle system tab, click on that plus sign to create a new one. And here we're going to change a lot of the different settings. First off, the number of particles, we're going to go up to 6,000. The start frame, we're going to go up to 10. And the end frame, we're going to go up to 15. So the particle system lasts for five frames. And the lifetime of the particles, I only want them to last for five frames as well. Next up, let's open up the Velocity tab, and we want the shape to go upwards and spread out. To do this, we can set the normal amount over here to a value of 4, and then the Z direction, which is up, we're going to set that up to a value of 6. Let's restart the animation and play it to see what it looks like. So you can see here is the basic shape of our explosion. You can see it's looking pretty good, but it's not very random. They're, they're all kind of in a straight line. So to fix that, we can set the randomization right here up a little bit. Let's go 0.5. We'll then restart and play this, and you can see that looks a lot better. So instead of having them all in single uh, streaks of particles, that's a lot more random. I might set the randomization just a bit higher. Let's go 0.6. And then from here we'll play it, and I'm liking how that shape looks. At this point, we're going to add in a couple more particle system and rotate them and position them around. So first off, I'll press Shift D on this object, then we'll right click to place it right at the center. We'll go over to the uh, texture tab right here, create a new texture, and then just change the size. This way it gives it some different variation. Maybe we'll rotate it like this so the particles are gonna go in this direction now. Then we'll jump back over to here, and whenever you create a new particle system, you always need to duplicate it so it doesn't change the original one. So we're gonna click that button right there to duplicate it. Let's set the start frame to a different number. Let's go with 11 and then 16 for the end frame. Down here, I'm going to set the random up to 0.8. I'm going to set the Z direction to 7 and the normal to 3. Just some different variations so it doesn't look exactly the same. Now when we play this, you can see there are two particle systems now. One's going off in this direction and one is going up. And this is going to create the shape of the explosion. From here, you can do this a third time if you want different uh, streaks going up. But one thing that I'm gonna do is actually add in a circle object. We'll go into edit mode and press F to fill in a face. And what I want here is for the particles to actually shoot downwards and hit the floor. This will cause a really cool effect with the smoke. So we're gonna add this in. We're then gonna rotate it along the X so it's aiming upside down. So the particles are gonna go in this direction. Let's create a new particle system. We'll set the number to 5,000. We'll set the start frame to 12 and the end frame to, let's go with 17. I usually like to have about five frames for the particle system. Then for the lifetime, we'll set that to five. And then again, down here, we're gonna set the normal amount. Let's go up to seven. And since the normals of this circle are pointing down, we don't need to change the Z direction. Just having the normal will be perfectly fine. We'll then set the random up to a value of 1.5. I think that's pretty good. Then to have them collide with something, let's add in a plane object. We'll go into front view and make sure that these are above, just like that. And then we'll select our plane. 
scale it up a little bit, and then we're gonna add collision to this. So jumping over to the physics panel, we're gonna select collision, set the dampening, which controls the bounciness of the particles, we'll go up 2.7, the randomized 2.5, and we'll do the same thing for the friction. I think that is pretty good. Now let's just double check that this particle system is actually gonna shoot downwards this way. And yep, you can see they are. I think they're bouncing just a little bit too much, so let's bring the dampening up to 0.9. Then we'll restart, play that again, and that looks pretty good. So from here, we'll select our circle, we'll move it back to our position, and move it down just like that. For the next step, we're going to set up the flow objects. So select one of them, click on fluid, and set the type over to flow. Then for the flow type, we're gonna switch it over to fire and smoke. For the flow behavior, we're gonna select inflow. And then for the sample substeps, since these particles are moving very quickly, we need to bring this up to a value of seven. For the flow source, we're not gonna use the mesh, we're gonna use the particle system that, that we just created. And then for the particle system, select the one in the drop-down menu. Another option that we need to check is the initial velocity. This will allow the smoke to actually flow and have some velocity with the particles. So when the particle moves very quickly, the smoke is gonna flow with it and have some initial velocity after the particle dies out. That's very important. We're gonna set this up to a value of three. And that is all of the basic settings for our flow object. And then what we're gonna do is copy these exact settings for the other two objects. Now, we could press Control L and click on Copy Modifiers, but that's also going to change the particle systems. So instead, I'm just gonna do this manually real quick. For our simulation, I want there to be an initial explosion of fire, and then I want another explosion after the fact, of probably around 50 frames later. We can do this very easily by selecting all of the objects. We'll select the icosphere, the other icosphere, and then the circle. Let's also move them to their own collection by hitting M, move them to their own collection. We'll call this explosion one. Then what we can do is press shift D on all of these objects, press M and move them to their own collection. And this one we're gonna call explosion two. Let's go ahead and hide the explosion one collection so it doesn't interfere with this one. Then all we have to do here is change the start and the end frame. First, duplicate the particle system. That's very important. Make sure you do that for every single one that you add. Let's restart the simulation and play it. And there's the first explosion. And then I want the second one to happen at around 60. So for the start frame, we're gonna go 60 and the end frame, we're gonna go 65. Then all we have to do is maybe rotate it like this so it's pointing in this direction. And then we'll do the same thing for the other one. Select the icosphere, duplicate the particle system, We'll set the start frame to 61, the end frame to 66, and then maybe we'll rotate it like this so it's facing a different direction, and then finally the circle. And you get the idea. You can do this as many times as you want throughout the entire animation. You can even add more particle systems. If you wanted to duplicate this circle, you can. So you can have one here, and then you can duplicate it and have another one here. But again, make sure you always duplicate the particle system so it doesn't affect the other ones. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add in this explosion, then I'm gonna add in one more explosion, probably at around frame 110. And there we go, I've now created the rest of the explosions with their own particle systems and correct frame start and end values. Let's take a look at it by hitting the spacebar. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and then finally here is the third one. So with that done, we're gonna go ahead and bake in this particle system by opening up the cache panel, and then clicking on bake all dynamics. And since we've duplicated all these objects, they're all gonna share the exact same settings over here, and we don't need to copy them. The last thing that we need to do before we bake in the smoke simulation is to add in a domain. Let's press shift A, add in a cube object. We'll go into front view, wireframe, and scale it up to be the correct size right about there is pretty good. I want to make sure that it matches the same height as the plane. That is good just like that. We'll go into front view, restart the timeline, and then make sure the particles are staying inside the domain object, which it looks like they are. So with that done, we're gonna press Control A, apply the scale, then jump over to the physics panel, click on fluid, set the type over to domain, now before we do anything else, we're gonna scroll down here and set the type over to all so we can bake everything all at once. This resolution division value basically controls how good the simulation will look. 
And typically with a higher resolution, it's gonna look like a bigger explosion in real life. With a lower resolution and a higher noise value down here, this is gonna make it look like a smaller explosion. Since I'm going for a large scale explosion, I'm gonna set this higher. We're gonna go up to 256. Now this is going to take a quite a long time to bake. So if you have a slower PC, I recommend setting this a little bit lower, like 128. That's still gonna look very good. But if your system can handle it, I recommend 256 because it's gonna look really good. Next up, we're gonna turn on the bottom border collisions because remember the particles are going to hit the bottom. So I also want the smoke to hit the bottom of the domain. We're gonna turn on adaptive domain. This will also help with uh, baking and speed up the process a little bit. And then we're also going to set the vorticity of the smoke. This is the amount of swirls in the smoke. Let's go up to 0.05. We only wanna do a little bit of this. We're also gonna turn on noise, open up this panel, and we're gonna leave the default settings as they are. Finally, open up the fire and the reaction speed. This is how fast this, the fire is going to dissipate. Let's go with a lower value, which in turn is gonna make the fire last longer. We're gonna set this to 0.4. And if you want to pause the simulation as we're baking it, you can click that is resumable option, but this is going to cause the simulation to bake a little bit longer. So I'm gonna leave it off because I'm happy with the rest of these settings. And one quick note that I had forgotten to mention in the tutorial is the end frame right here. Make sure to set this to 170. We don't need 250 frames for the simulation. And also while we are here, let's set the end frame in the timeline to 170 as well. Another thing to note about this cache folder right here where all of the smoke information is being stored, this is a temporary folder. You can see it right there, apt at a local temp. That means when you close Blender and open it up the next day, all of those files for the cache are going to get deleted because it's only a temporary file. So if you want to save your cache and so we, you can open up the project later and not have to rebake it, click on this button right here and then navigate to a different folder and save it right there. Once you've done that, you are ready to go, then click on Bake All. All right, the simulation has finished baking and here is our result. It took a little over an hour to finish it. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. There is a lot of detail in the smoke and the fire. Now, if we play our animation, you're gonna see it's very, very slow and it takes a very long time to go through all of the frames. So if you wanted to see how your simulation looks without having to render out the entire thing, here is a quick tip for you. First, make sure you set up the camera like you can see here, I've set it up in the front view. Then over in the outliner, make sure you hide all of the particles, because if we play it, you can see all of the particles are right there. I don't want those to show up, so I'm going to just hide them from the view by hitting that little eyedropper tool right there. Next, make sure you set an output of where you want your animation to go to, and then use the file format MPEG with the encoding of MP4. And then you can come over to view and then click on viewport render animation. And that's going to render an animation of your viewport, which is very handy, especially when working with simulations. So now that I've done that, here is our simulation right now. As you can see, it looks really cool. If you want the uh, explosion to be a little more horizontal, you're gonna have to rotate the particles so they're going horizontal rather than straight up. But other than that, I think it looks really good. So now let's set up the material. First, I'm gonna jump over to the render settings and switch it from Eevee over to Cycles. I will be showing you how to render this in Eevee after we create the material, but just to actually see what our simulation looks like without having to set up everything, we're gonna switch over to Cycles. Now, to set up the material, we're going to split this view, switch it over to the Shader Editor, then create a new material. We're not going to need this principled shader, so go ahead and delete that. And also make sure, I forgot to mention, have your domain selected when you create the material. Next, we're going to add in a principled volume shader. Take the volume, plug it into the volume of the material output, then let's go into rendered view to see what it looks like. The density of this, we're gonna go up to a value of 30, so we have a lot more dense smoke. And then for the color, we're going to drag it a little bit darker, so we have more of explosion looking smoke. Now you can see our fire is not in our scene. Now there are a couple of ways to add that back in. The black body intensity is one of those ways. If you want to bring that up to like 15 or so, you can, and you can see here is the result. But this doesn't really give us a lot of options for controlling the color of the flame. 
So instead, we're going to be adding in a couple of other nodes. First off, we're going to add in a volume info node. We'll place that over here. Then we're going to add in a color ramp, place it here. And then finally, a converter math node, we'll place that here. There are two things here, the density or the flame. You can use either one and I'll show you the differences. First off, we're going to take the flame, plug it into the color ramp, then the color into the add, and then the value is gonna go into the emission strength. We need to switch this over to multiply. Now this bottom value controls how bright the flame is gonna be. Let's go up to 50. Then to add in the color, we're going to select this color ramp, shift D it, drag it down here. We'll take the flame, plug it in, and then the color is gonna go into the emission color. Then over here, we're gonna change a couple of these handles. First off, the handle on the right, we're gonna go with a light uh, orangish color, somewhere around there. Then we're gonna add in another handle. This is gonna be a more of a reddish orange, right about there, brighten it up a little bit. And then finally, we'll add in one more handle. This is gonna be more of a darker orange, somewhere around here. You can play around with these and change the colors however you like. And then also another thing to make the colors pop a bit more is over in these settings over here, down in the color management, set the look over to high contrast. This is gonna make the colors pop a lot more. So if we go back to frame around 20 or so, we're gonna see the fire a lot more as you can see there. And then if we jump over to frame about 40 or so, we're gonna see the fire dissipates very quickly. That's why I don't really like using the flame attribute because when the fire disappears, it's gone from the scene. So instead, I'm gonna be taking the density output, plugging that into the color ramp, and then down here in the color ramp as well. And as you can see here, we have a lot more fire in our scene. To clamp down on this, we're going to drag this color ramp much closer to the white value, somewhere around here. And then we'll play around with these. So now, instead of the fire dissipating very quickly, it's going to take the density, which is the actual smoke, and use that to uh, add in the fire. And I think this looks pretty nice. So now if we jump over to frame like 70 or so, but you can still see there's some fire right there. If you don't like how much fire there is, you can keep going with the color ramp, drag it even closer to the, to the right side. Something like that will look pretty good. And there we go. From here, you can just render this out. Create a basic scene. If you want to add some lighting, you can do that and then render it out in cycles. Now, if you want to render this in Eevee, there are a couple of other things that we're going to need to change. So let's go ahead and get into that. First thing, of course, is to switch over to the EV render engine. If we do that, you're gonna see our fire looks very bad. So we're gonna open up the volumetrics, and firstly, we're going to set the tile size down to two pixels. This will give us more detail in the fire. Next, we're going to turn on volumetric shadows. That'll also help with adding some shadows to the volume. And then finally, we're going to set the start and end values. Basically how Eevee renders out volumetrics is it breaks it up into different layers over this amount of distance. And the amount of layers is based on the sample count. So currently we have 64 layers over a hundred meter distance. But the problem is our volume is only in a small section. It's only about five meters across. So we're stretching out all of those layers over a hundred meters, but we only need it to stretch over about five meters. So what we need to do is go into the camera view and set the start to right where the volume starts. So we're gonna drag this up until we see the volume disappear and then we'll drag it down just a little bit. So let's go with a value of 19. Then the start we're going to set at the end of the domain. And again, since it's about five, actually it's only about four meters, all we need to do is set this up to around 25. So now all the layers are being compressed within those two values. And as you can see there, our simulation looks 10 times better. If you want even more detail, bring up the sample count even higher, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set that up to 128. And then the shadows down here, I'm gonna go up to 32. We can also turn on bloom if we want to add some glow to the fire. And then if we want to add in a background, you can do that as well, but that's basically all you really need to do. If you are animating the camera, these values here in the uh, volumetrics might not work. If you're moving closer to the smoke simulation, they might not work very well. So you're gonna need to play around with these until you get the exact number that you need. But there we go. That is how you create a cool explosion in Blender very easily. 
Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. And if you created something cool, I would love to see it. So make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other suggestions for tutorials in the future, let me know in the comments down below, but I will see you guys in the next one.